What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna talk about the SVS Prime Wireless Pro Bookshelf Speakers. Now, I almost didn't review these. Uh, SVS reached out to me and they were like, hey, we got these new speakers, you wanna check them out? They're powered and I was like, man, I hate powered speakers. But then I looked at them and I looked at my living room and I was like, damn, I have the perfect living room for these speakers. Because in my living room, which is upstairs, I'll throw a picture on the screen, I cannot really accommodate a sound system. My home, my living room at least upstairs, was designed for like a freaking sound bar and that's it. The only way I can have a sound system up there is if I put a pair of bookshelf speakers on top of my media console with an amplifier and it, it you know, I can get it to sound like really good, but powered speakers without an amplifier, that's an even cleaner aesthetic side. So I emailed them back and I was like, you know what, send them, like I'll check them out. So they came in, I unboxed them. First and foremost, I was super impressed by the build quality. The gloss white finish on these is beautiful. As you can see on the screen behind me, they obviously come in black as well. Um, but look, we're gonna do this review the same way we generally do. I'll tell you about some specs and standout features that I thought were cool. I'll throw the main ones on screen. I'll tell you what the speakers sound like, how I use them, and I use these in two different rooms in two totally different ways. I'll try to compare them to some other speakers, but that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, and then we'll wrap up the video. So, first one thing I do wanna mention is these have a ton of features, guys. There is no way I could have reviewed this speaker and talked about every single aspect of its performance and its features, the video would easily turn into a one hour video and no one's got time for that. So if there's something I don't cover in this video, it just means I didn't use it that way. For example, I have a modern home, which means I have ethernet ports on every floor just readily available. So when I needed to use the streaming capabilities of the speaker, I just plugged it in via the ethernet cable. I didn't need to use Wi-Fi. So those of you that are wondering, hey, how, how's the Wi-Fi performance versus, um, you know, connect, plugging it in directly to an ethernet cable? I couldn't tell you, but in my experience, anytime I've AB'd that in a product uh, with streaming functionality, I have not noticed a difference. So I'd imagine it's just fine. But by all means, email SVS if you're curious about that. So look, slew of functions. You can stream directly to it. There's an app you could use or you could use your music player's own onboard app like Tidal Connect, things like that. That's what I did. Um, it's got line input. So if you wanna connect an external streamer and an external DAC for some reason, you could do that. And I, I did that and I'll tell you what that did. Um, it's got HDMI ARC inputs. I definitely used that, especially when it was upstairs in my living room where it was primarily serving as a TV setup and gaming setup. Um, what else did I use? Uh, it's got a subwoofer output, God bless. That's what I'm talking about, love to see that. A ton of power. Um, let's get into how I used it and my impressions because I hate powered speakers usually. Um, I really liked this one a lot. How much? Um, potential product of the year, that's how much I liked it. So let's talk about it. So. I had it upstairs in my living room first, sitting on top of my media console. You plug in the main speaker, which is this bad boy right here. There's a umbilical cable that connects to the other one to send it power. Um, I used HDMI ARC input connected to my 77 inch OLED that I have up there. And I was mostly watching like movies, TV shows, anime. I watched Top Gun Maverick, fantastic movie. I liked it so much I went back and rewatched the original Top Gun. and. For those of you that have not watched the original Top Gun in a while, do me a favor, check it out and pay attention to how much everyone is sweating. I don't know what it was about that movie. Literally everyone in the original Top Gun movie is just dripping sweat in every scene. It's hilarious. Very good movie though. Um, I played video games. I played Hogwarts Legacy on here. I played Mass Effect 3 with this speaker. Um, I played uh, Chained Echoes with these speakers because I have a gaming rig up there as well. You'll see it in the picture. If you see that little kind of like tower next to the speaker, that's my gaming PC. Um, I just sit on the couch, use a PS5 controller. For those of you that don't know, computer gaming doesn't just mean mouse and keyboard. There's a lot of couch gamers like me out there. We've got a gaming PC in the living room. We sit back on the couch and we just use a PS5 or Xbox controller. It's a lot of fun. This speaker performed absolutely flawlessly. 
This is one of the best speakers I've had in my living room upstairs in terms of doing everything. The HDMI ARC was awesome because it allowed me to continue to use my TV remote control. Now my TV does have analog output so I could have connected it line in. Um, but most modern TVs don't. So most guys, when they're connecting their stereo to a TV, they've got to use like optical and then you got to use a separate remote. It's so annoying. Using the HDMI ARC allowed me to just use my TV's remote to adjust volume and I love that. Now, this unit does come with its own remote control and you could totally use that if you want to. I didn't need to though, so I just shoved it in a drawer and didn't touch, it, touch this remote until I brought these speakers down here where I use them in my listening room. Um, let me tell you about what they sounded like up there. So clarity in the top end was excellent. Uh, dialogue intelligibility, intelligibility in the mid range was excellent. Bass performance, very good for how small these speakers are. If you're considering spending eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars on a sound bar for your TV rig, if you could fit these instead, trust me, do that. I've heard many sound bars, including ones that cost a thousand dollars or more, and they cannot come close even a little bit to what these guys could do. Superior to that. Um, if you could do like an amp and speakers, of course that's gonna be great too, but you're gonna have added cost and you're gonna have more components and so on. And I know, I know a lot of people try to keep their living room looking as clean as possible, at least I do. Down here in the listening room, I let it get all crazy, but my living room, I like it to be more Spartan. So um, the bass was, so, the bass on these speakers is interesting. It, go, it seems to go down to about 40 hertz and then it starts to roll off there, right? Um, and these speakers can play extremely loud. That's whether you're listening to music or watching movies. They can get way, way louder than I care to listen. Um, I did not use a subwoofer with these when I was using them upstairs in my TV rig. I didn't feel the need to. Let me tell you about some other things real quick. There's a little OLED screen here. You can turn it off. I had it off most of the time. When you go to adjust the volume using, let's say use the SVS remote for example, it will give you a little indicator letting you know you're adjusting the volume. When you use your TV's remote, at least with my TV, the LG uh, C1, um, this screen did not light up to give me any indicator. Instead, the indicator was on the screen of my TV showing me that I was adjusting volume. Love that. I believe it's a little OLED screen if I didn't say that. You do have knobs here to adjust your source and volume, so if you wanted to use these in like a near field computer slash desktop setup, you could totally do that and you'd never have to touch the remote. They do have grills, obviously, as you can see, one speaker's got a grill, one doesn't. I do wish they were magnetic though. This is a new speaker and I, I, I was really like under the impression like magnetic grills were the future and we weren't gonna see this like pin and cup design anymore, but it doesn't look bad in any way. I chose to use these speakers with the grill on um, for no reason other than aesthetics. I think the white just looked really good, really high class. I loved it. So look, uh, serving TV functionality, these speakers were absolutely flawless. And for that category, these are a potential product of the year for me. I have a list I keep when I review products and they just crazy impress me. I write them down in my, for my potential product of the year list. And this speaker is in my potential, the product year list right now for, you know, that, that TV type setup, how I use them upstairs in my living room. Phenomenal. Then I brought them down here because, hey, like mostly this channel, this YouTube channel of mine, Nemo Propaganda, it's not a home theater channel. We're not generally talking about AV. It's usually just stereo. So I figure you guys are going to want to know how it performs for dedicated two channel or 2.1 channel music, right? So I brought them down here, set them up. The umbilical cable is about eight feet long, so it's definitely long enough to allow ideal placement in this room. Um, and this is what I noticed. It was a lot of the same, actually. The top end, again, it was all about clarity. The mid range was very neutral, and the, the bass was, again, quite strong for the size. Again, the bass did go pretty good down to about, you know, 50 or 40 to 50 hertz or so. It was very strong in that region. Below 40 hertz, we weren't getting a whole lot of response or cone movement either. My guess is there's a DSP in there that just rolls that right off so the speaker can play really loud instead. I did connect a subwoofer um, just to you know make sure it works, obviously. It did, it was a phenomenal pairing. I have a PB1000 Pro here um, and I will be reviewing that subwoofer soon. So look, whether you wanna use these for music, movies, TVs, gaming, desktop, they can do it all and they have a whole slew of features to make that easy. One thing I thought was really cool, 
Um, these have a built-in network switch. So what do I mean by that? You, If you plug in an ethernet cable and you're like, dude, but I need that ethernet cable for something else. This also has an ethernet cable output. So I, I, it was, it was, I felt it was just very forward thinking of SVS. So hats off to them. Uh, seriously, hats off. They, they, they really thought of every input and output you could possibly want. So that's pretty much the review. Now, I will say this. I, I, I don't think these are designed for someone that's going to buy them for a dedicated two-channel listening room. I think most people are going to prefer to get passive speakers and an amplifier instead. Um, their performance when addressing two channel music was fantastic, but, um, you know, that thousand dollars, you not thousand, eight ninety nine, nine hundred dollars you pay for these is going towards the drivers, the cabinet, the DSP inside, the amplifiers inside the HDMI, ARC, all those features these have. Whereas if you buy a pair of speakers that are $900, you're paying 900 bucks just for drivers, a cabinet and a crossover. Those speakers generally are going to be a little bit better. You're also going to have to add a separate amp and you're going to spend a lot more money overall. But if you want a dedicated two channel system only, I would suggest other options, but mixed system, this is going to be really hard to beat. Um, especially if you're doing something like 70% movies and TVs or 80% and then, you know, 20 to 30% music, you are going to love these. So how do they sound compared to other speakers? So I hate powered speakers normally, so I've avoided them like the plague. The only ones I've reviewed here were the Bacard A500s, but those are like $5,000. Are they better? Yeah, they're a lot better. They're five times the price. So we're not going to do that comparison. Um, some of you got, guys might want to know how they compare to the Kef LS50 wireless or the LSX. I don't know. I haven't heard those. I couldn't tell you. Um, what I can tell you is how they compare to passive speakers. You know what I mean? I've had a ton of passive speakers upstairs in my living room and down here in my listening room. So let's compare these to speakers that are, so these are $899. Passive speakers, let's do half the price because you're going to need to buy an amp also. I believe it would be unfair to compare these to passive speakers out of the same price because you're going to have that hidden cost. So Oh, I didn't tell you what it sounded like. I'm all over the place, guys. I had a bang before this video. Real quick, I did connect an external streamer and DAC. Um, so before, when I was using the speakers with its internal DAC streaming to it using Tidal Connect, it sounded good, perfectly serviceable. The presentation was mostly clarity focused, very neutral, good bass. When I connected my external DAC, the Denifrips Aries 2, my Blue Sound Node 2i uh, network streamer via the RCA line inputs, Soundstage gained some depth, some width, some height. Imaging got a little bit sharper. Everything just got kicked up a notch. Nowhere near worth the $1,500 of added equipment that I used. So I wouldn't recommend you combine those two on purpose. But if you have an external DAC line around that's pretty good, there are some upgrades to be had should you choose to go that route. But I don't recommend it. I think it does defeat the purpose of an all-in-one solution like this. So... Where was I comparing this to other speakers that are passive? So we're gonna go to speakers that are half the price, um, figure four or $500, because you're gonna use your other four or $500 for an amp like the Emotiva TA1, Iota VX SA3 and so on to complete the system. And you still won't have all the features this has. You still won't have a built-in streamer. You still won't have HDMI, ARC and all that stuff. So, um, but let's talk about it because some of you guys might wanna know. So let's do the um, Triangle Bro 3s. Uh, paired with something like an IOTA VX SA3. You know, if you find those Bro 3s on sale, that's a speaker that's, yeah, you can find them on sale fairly often around the 350 neighborhood. The IOTA VX SA3 is like 550. So together, it's about the same price as this powered speaker. The Bro 3s are a lot larger. The speakers tonally are fairly similar though. Both the Triangle Bro 3s and the SVS Prime Wireless Pros a little bit on the forward side of neutral. They're more gonna have that clarity focused presentation in the treble. Um, I would actually give a treble separation to the S3S Prime Wireless Pro. I felt it was better. Moving down to the mid-range, the triangle takes the edge a little bit. The mid-range on the triangle is a little bit warmer, richer, more organic and natural sounding. Whereas the uh, mid-range of the S3S Prime Wireless Pro is just more neutral, just the facts, nothing crazy going on there. Moving down to the bass, both speakers have decent bass. 
The triangles were just like a little bit more linear with their base being a much larger passive speaker where the SVS Prime Wireless Pro 2 seemed to be really strong and confident around 50 Hertz and then it just starts to roll off. So the two speakers are voiced somewhat similar. The SVS has the better treble, the triangle has slightly better mid range and the SVS has better bass. Um, in a way, I say in a way because the larger triangle has slightly more effortless bass, but the SVS, even though it's smaller, it has like more impactful bass. It might just come down to personal taste, honestly. And again, with all that said, you still don't get the HDMI ARC, you still don't get the, um, you know, onboard DSP and being able to stream to it and stuff like that. So, um, let's do another comparison. Let's do something a little different. Let's see here, let's do a speaker that's more expensive, but an amp that's cheaper. Let's do a speaker like the, let's do the Polk Reserve R100. Those are $650, but we'll pair it with the Arillic A50 Plus uh, mini streamer integrated amplifier. It's a little class D amp that's 200 bucks. That brings the price of the two real close to each other within $50. So, um, this comparison is interesting because you get a lot of the same functionalities. You get the, you get a streamer out of both setups. You still don't get HDMI, HDMI ARC, however. And even though you get a streamer now with the Arillic A50 Plus, you're losing a lot of power. The Arillic A50 probably has an honest 25 watts a channel, whereas the SVS Prime Wireless Pro are gonna be able to play tremendously louder than the Polk R100 Arillic A50 uh, Plus setup. But let's talk about how it would sound. The uh, Polk Reserve R100, look, from top to bottom, it's a warmer speaker. The uh, SVS Prime Wireless Pro from top to bottom, it's a more neutral, accurate speaker. The Polk Reserve R100 has a more tonally rich mid-range. The SVS is more neutral. Moving down to the base, the Polk Reserve R100 cannot compete with the SVS Prime Wireless Pro when it comes to bass output. The SVS just takes the easy win. So. As you can see, I, I can keep doing this like forever. I can keep giving you a speaker paired with an amp and compare it. And you'll see it'll be like kind of close, but the SVS manages to pull ahead all while giving you more features. It really is a great all-in-one solution. Now again, look, if you're looking for just dedicated two-channel music only, SVS has other passive speakers they can pair with a badass amplifier if you wanna go that route. But for an all-in-one living room solution, that it's gonna let you enjoy your movies more, your TV shows more, your video games more, whether it's for you or your kids, um, and enjoy music more, whether it's for you, your wife, the kids, their friends that come over, whatever. At $8.99, I don't think this can be beat. I really don't. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you guys think there's anything that could beat this for $8.99? If, if you can think of a winning combination, let me know in the comments. And for the love of God, don't just tell me your own system without including the hidden costs. What do I mean by hidden costs? Well, cables, of course. I'll give you an example. My preamp and mono blocks to connect the two, I need XLR cables, right? That costs money, you know? You gotta include that kind of stuff. So anyways, guys, uh, I don't think I have anything else I would wanna say about the Prime Wireless Pro. It was nice to have an SVS product in here. It's been a while since I've had one here. And, um, I'll, I'd, I'll give it the best compliment I possibly can. I'd, I'd buy it for myself if I didn't already have a setup up there. I, I truly would. Up there, I, what I do usually in my living room is I'll have one of my extra amps like the Hegel H190 or the Emotiva TA2 or uh, my Arillic A50. And I any speaker that comes in here for review, I run them upstairs first to break them in. So I've always, always got a pair of speakers up there if not multiples. I don't need another pair, but I'll tell you this, guys. Um, I'm sure you guys noticed I didn't make a video the last two weeks. There's two reasons. One, every time I was upstairs and I was like, okay, we need to take these SVS speakers downstairs so we can listen to them in the music room. I didn't want to disconnect them from my living room setup because I was enjoying them so much watching my TV shows, movies, and video games. So I wouldn't bring them down. The second reason is every time I came down here and remembered I should go upstairs and grab the SVS speakers, I'd be listening to the Thompson Stereo Galleon amp and I'd sit down and two hours would pass and time would fly. So big winner. Um, ask questions in the comments below. This YouTube channel does have a free Discord. If you join my free Discord, don't be an asshole. We got three moderators. They'll ban you, they will mute you, they will kick you out if they have to. But I don't think we've ever had to kick someone Maybe one time, maybe one time we did. 
Anyway, you get what I'm saying, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, later.